All right, today we're talking about shapes again, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Bridget Riley here. <laughs> Artists have so long uh, have so many choices when creating works of art, and we talked a little bit uh, earlier uh, last week about geometric shapes, those shapes like squares and triangles and rectangles and circles. We talked about organic shapes, like those irregular shapes like clouds and trees and rocks and things you might find in nature. <clears throat> Today they start talking about irregular shapes, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like the term irregular shapes. These are just geometric shapes. I mean, just organic shapes. Um, irregular shapes, that you know, they they have a, their own little special definition for them. Shapes that have an unequal sides and angles, and um, what they're kind of referring here to are hybrid shapes that are that have sides like geometric shapes, but have the rules of an organic shape, if that makes sense. And um, I don't love the term though, I just generally think of those as organic shapes. So you can check out some of these irregular shapes. These these are, these are I mean, geometric shapes. These are just plain old geometric shapes. Now, they're calling them irregular geometric shapes because their angles aren't exactly square, sides aren't exactly square, not the same length, and that sort of thing. And so, <laughs> when you're looking at those and how you can identify them and, and sort of pick them out, they're looking at how you can recognize some of those geometric shapes that maybe end differently. If you'll notice this triangle has sort of this rounded edge, and that, that kind of makes it an irregular shape, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't love the whole term irregular shapes. But um, we do want to talk about shapes with dimension because anytime we have a a, a shape uh, that has dimension to it and a third dimension added to it, well, it's now a form, and I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> if I have a single post-it note, a single post-it note has width. I can draw my finger across the width of it. It has height, so it has two dimensions. Height is one dimension, width is one dimension. But if we turn it sideways and look at the depth, it doesn't really have any depth. It's just one single piece of post-it note wide or thick. <clears throat> so it doesn't really have any thickness, if you will, so that no depth, that's that third dimension. If I have, however, a stack of post-it notes, well, now I still have the width and the length, but now I also have depth the third dimension it goes back into space a little bit and so think about those are the three dimensions that we talked about how high is it how tall how wide how deep that sort of thing um, <clears throat> so when we look at, at three-dimensional shapes and 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 they're talking about short shapes that have length height and width um, we're going to change the names of those shapes um, so a, a circle becomes a sphere. A circle is a two-dimensional shape. A sphere, like a ball, is a three-dimensional form. It's a shape that's gone three-dimensional. It's now called a form. If we have a square and we add depth to the square, just like you see here, a square is just height and width. But when we add, I mean, height and length. But when we add width, we get and length and height all three together we get a cube a three-dimensional cube which is now a form <laughs> so we need to kind of understand and we're going to talk about that most of today the idea of, of, of um, turning shapes into forms and that's what we're going to focus on this week we're going to move our uh, optical illusions back to next week this week we're going to be looking at how we convert shapes into the the idea of form is make them look three-dimensional so we want to know the secrets have that just don't tell uh, they trick you just when you thought I'd master or just when I thought I'd master the differences between two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes I find out that artists can create the illusion of a three-dimensional shape <laughs> so this is a two-dimensional geometric shape uh, work of art by um, Alskowiz Hmm, not really good at that one. <laughs> uh, Richard Alskowitz. It's an example of a flat two-dimensional work of art. 
The artwork is created using many squares and only has two dimensional, two two dimensions, height and width. But it looks like it's got some depth. The kind of the way he's used that that the, his his values made it made it look like it had depth to it. This is a two dimensional irregular shape, a work of art by K uh, Kandinsky. Uh, it's flat, only has length and height. Um, if you look closely, you can spot the geometric and irregular shapes in this artwork. Sure, there's tons of them in there. Look at those are regular shapes. An illusion of a three-dimensional shape. Again, you can create the impression that these are going back into space. When you draw that cube from a square into a cube, you add that third dimension, it automatically starts adding that illusion of depth. And last but not least, three-dimensional artwork. Uh, this is a cube piece, and you can see it's got uh, a three-dimensional piece that uses uh, the illusion of cubes as well as being an actual three-dimensional thing that has uh, width in it as well. So it's it's both an illusion and, and an actual thing. So if we look here at this surface, this surface is sort of flat, but we've got all these different shapes uh, and different values, if you will, this shape and this shape and this shape and when they do that they create that illusion that that is a three-dimensional shape when we can tell this is an actual three-dimensional shape over here it's kind of strange I love that sculpture <coughs> just like uh, you create your own pattern using two-dimensional geometric shapes pattern can also be created by repeating irregular shapes before you continue your shape adventure you can practice creating your own pattern using the new shapes you learned about by completing this activity. We're not going to complete this activity. <laughs> um, we're not going to do all the, uh, the irregular uh, shape activity from this module. If you want to do it at home, the module is there. You're more than welcome to. But we want to move on um, uh, and make sure we get in today talking about uh, transforming shapes into forms because that's what we're going to be looking at doing on our Thursday meeting. So creating the illusion of a three-dimensional shape on a two-dimensional surface, like a piece of paper, may seem complicated, but it's actually quite simple. All you have to do is follow a, a, a few short steps and you'll be on your way. So um, we're looking at uh, how you take a square and convert it into a cube. So what they're showing you here is what we call the, an offset square. They drew one square and then down a little lower to the left they drew another square and then when they create, connected the three sides, or the sides that you could see and erase that little middle part there where you couldn't see through the cube, so you erase that, then you're left with that cube. Now before they erase it it's like if you're looking at a clear cube, like imagine a little box made of glass that's what it looks like now when you're doing a triangle this one's a little, uh, a little more difficult uh, in my personal opinion and, and I don't love the way they did it but uh, you can see they added that third leg and it kind of goes back into space and uh, it really comes towards us that that third leg and it makes that pyramid kind of come out in our direction so studio time we're going to be talking a little bit about this week uh, on Thursday about how you create the illusion of these three-dimensional shapes and, and whether it's a square, uh, whether it's a um, um, cube, whether it's a sphere, whether it's a triangle, a pyramid, a cone, um, a cylinder. These are all three-dimensional types of shapes and we want to look at how we create those that illusion. Um, we talked last week about uh, Bridget Ryland. If you remember, Bridget did those black and white images that appeared as if they were going back into space. And so we're going to look um, <coughs> at, um, uh, we're going to look more at an organic uh, a little bit um, quickly. Uh, organic dimensions, just like geometric and irregular shapes, organic shapes can be found in two-dimensional and three-dimensional works of art. For an organic shape to have form, it needs to have all three dimensions, which are length, width, and height. Do you think the organic shapes in this artwork are two-dimensional or 3D? Well, these all look pretty 2D over here. 
This one's starting to get a little more 3D, but it's pretty flat. And there's also, they start talking about the idea of kinetic sculpture. So think about a three-dimensional sculpture. It's got three dimensions, height and width and depth. If we think of like a, uh, uh, um, a sculpture that can have movement, um, we're talking about a, a sculpture that has elements or pieces or parts that either by motor or by wind or by you touching a movement, somehow they move. Uh, they're designed to move. So we often think of uh, three-dimensional sculptures like stone carvings and they just sit there like big pieces of rock. But kinetic sculptures are three-dimensional uh, works of art that do something. They, they move and, and they, they are interactive in some way. Uh, and so this artwork is an example of how organic shapes can be used to create three-dimensional works. And this wavy organic shaped sculpture is called a kinetic sculpture. Uh, it's a type of art that moves. Um, and so these little, these little pieces individually can kind of move on their own, which and it's really neat if you can see it actually in movement. Um, real quick, I want to take a look if I have if we can find it. There's a really neat piece. There we go. That's it right there. So these are very, uh, so this is, you can see the kinetic sculpture in motion. See it actually moving. <clears throat> and that's the wind makes those those pieces inside of it turn. Uh, and uh, the pieces kind of rotate inside and go outside of it. Each one of these is an individual little arm that rotates. So it creates this illusion of like this flower blooming. There's lots of different examples uh, of different types of kinetic sculpture. When this one moves, it creates spiraling that goes around inside. Let's see if we got any more little gifs that show us. I love that, that's a neat piece. Um, some sculptures are designed to move and have like little gears and that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> this is a wall sculpture. You've probably seen these. They, they kind of move in different, um, uh, counterclockwise and clockwise so they create the illusion uh, that they're spinning action let's see I wonder if there's a this is the same thing this one moves I wish we could find one another one in, in moving here let's see Oh, this is a new one. So you can see this is a kinetic sculpture. So we can see sculptures of images moving up and down. These, these are all on little uh, wires and they're controlled by computers. And um, these types of kinetic sculptures use individual pieces that move independently of each other, but collectively make one big image. And you can see sometimes it looks like it's rain, but sometimes they, make, they can uh, make it look like it's a car. It can take the shape of a car. It can take the shape of, a, of um, waves. You can see it making waves there. <clears throat> but kinetic sculpture is designed to move in some way. All right. <clears throat> when creating a work of art using shapes, artists use other elements of art as well. In this artwork, the artists use many elements of art, uh, like line, shape, color, space, to create the unified work of, of art. These elements work together to create harmony in the piece. Harmony is when everything works together and looks like it belongs together and nothing stands out. Nothing, uh, as, as, nothing stands out as being... Uh, in the wrong place. Looks like everything belongs together and then everything works together like it's supposed to. Um, so we're going to stop with uh, identifying these different types of shapes. Uh, you should by now be able to identify those geometric shapes. You should be able to identify organic shapes. Know a little bit about irregular shapes. You already know I don't care about irregular that much. 
but three-dimensional shapes. What's a three-dimensional shape? And, and we're going to start calling three-dimensional shapes forms because a form is a three-dimensional shape. And um, we're going to look Thursday at how we can create the impression of cubes, spheres, cones, uh, cylinders, real cool three-dimensional um, objects that artists use every time they draw anything. They try to break it down in the most basic shapes, basic forms that, that something's made of, and then try to recreate those by knowing um, those basic understandings of how to create the illusion of those uh, three-dimensional objects. And when they're put together, what can they become? So we're going to look at that uh, on Thursday. Bring pencil and paper, markers and crayons, whatever you want to draw with if you don't have anything. This is going to be one of those that's probably going to be fun to do uh, on Chrome Canvas or Sketchpad or something like that. All right, guys. Uh, before we leave today, I do want to just uh, take a look at a PowerPoint that, uh, and just introduce that we are going to open up and take a look at next week. All about shape. Oh, this one says the fourth grade, but it's actually the fifth grade one. Um, but it's uh, it takes a look at organic and geometric shape, and um, we are going to uh, take a look at see how artists use those three dimensional shapes to create forms of their own in these large spaces, and, and we're we're kind of building up towards um, how we can use all of these elements together and collectively. And in this uh, uh, um, PowerPoint, they show you how artists use shape to create. Uh, geometric shapes to create buildings and and such. Um, think about how artists can create uh, use uh, uh, two dimensional shape. As a kid, even a, a lot of artists started off as, as children and they started building with blocks. And we thought, as their kids, we built little square blocks. We built a foundation of bases, then we build up upon that base and sort of how we get our basic understanding of architecture. And artists do the same thing. They start with these generally big geometric shapes. They have a foundational base and they figure out what they're going to add to that to create their design. So <clears throat> we're going to take a look again a little bit more at shape uh, on um, next week. We'll finish up shape uh, next week completely and um, talk about Bridget Riley next week a little more. And we'll make our optical illusions next week. This week on Thursday, come prepared to be making some forms using value. We're going to use the value differences. If, you, if we look at a form, we often know that it's a form because we can tell where the light is hitting it. So we're going to take a look at how we can convince people that something's three-dimensional. All right, guys, have a great day.